Hey everybody, I'm Darren Frommel and this is Pop the Question. He is a keyboard player, songwriter, producer, engineer, music teacher, husband, and dad. We know you know him around the Philadelphia area, and now he's here with me on Pop the Question. Harry, welcome to Pop the Question. That's all I am? Just those couple things there? That's <laughs> just a little bit of thing. Right. A little bit of stuff, right? Hey guys, and guys, just so you know. Joe will let Joe's here and he'll let me know if you have any questions for Harry or whatever. He'll kind of shout them out to us or whatever. And we'll yeah. just go. Um, your first band was Mr. Green Jeans. Yes, it was. And for Technically, those... it was not the first band. Strat. But that's. that's... Yeah. Strat is... I remember that one. <laughs> Harry and I have known each other for a long time. It was the first um, band that did well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which, for those of you that don't know, um, was a huge cover band up and down the East Coast. Played for millions of people, like literally millions of people. Um, tell me what that experience was like for you. It was a roller coaster. I mean, when I talk roller coaster, it was so. When Brian and I started this band in the early '92-ish, we just got out of college. Him and I are both teaching. We're, you know, I'm teaching right. in in Kennett Square, and he's teaching in Rising Sun, Maryland, and and you know, we start this band, and we start to get really big, and then of course it got to a point where it's like, well. You're making this much money playing in a band, but you're making this much money teaching. Right. I'm like, well, no brainer. <laughs> so we end up we did this band, and and I stuck with it for as long as I could. I mean, mm -hmm. twelve years or so. But you know, when you have a, a wife and two kids, it, it got right, hard. Right. But it was it was, you know, it's like everyone said, well, do you regret being in the band? I'm like, no, because there's so many things I got to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to we were the official rock band of the Philadelphia Eagles. We played, mm -hmm. you, I mean, you name the club up and down the East Coast, we played, we set attendance mm -hmm. records. You it probably was, paid it two times, three uh, times, oh my, whatever. Yeah, right? it was yeah. just, it was, it was a really good experience. But it got to the point for me in like 2004, and I knew, you know, I, I had quit teaching long before that, but it, right. it was the straw for me that broke the camel's back, and I said to our manager, I mean, we were, we were not a local band anymore, we were regional. Yeah, and yeah, when we're yeah. talking about regional, we're talking about like Vermont down to... Carolinas and right. West and whatever. So I said to their manager one time, I said, listen, uh, Easter night. I said, my kids still believe in the Easter Bunny. I said, can we play local? He's like, oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's not, not local. Not so when I rolled in the door after playing a gig the night before at like 7 o'clock in the morning, right. and everyone was just getting up, mm. I'm like, I, I can't do this anymore. I said, as much as I want to keep doing this, I can't. Um, and also it was right around that, a little bit before then, where... I was really getting into my songwriting, mm -hmm. and it was like I wasn't having a whole lot of time to do that because the right. band was just—I mean, we were You're kicking ass. We we were we were, <laughs> had gigs. I mean, at one point, I think at a high point, we were doing like two hundred and twenty-five, two hundred fifty gigs a year. Yeah. Which for even a touring band, national touring band, mm -hmm. that's a lot of gigs. A lot. And yeah. when I we did it for twelve, I did it for twelve years straight mm -hmm. Ugh. without break. <laughs> Something I had to give. That just makes me tired hearing about it, really. <laughs> like 250, 200, just take 200 gigs a year times 12 years. That's, that's a lot of gigs. A lot of gigs. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, um, you opened up for like acts like G Love, Mar Mercy Playground, Jeffrey Gaines, yeah. Veruca Salt, Better Than Ezra, Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, to name a few. Um, what did you learn from those those bands that you like opened up? and everything so those yeah so I mean those are just when I was in the band I know, I know after I had left they had done more than that right right um, one of the things that I thought was kind of cool and I just I was telling somebody that the other day when we we did a gig with Marcy Playground up in New York City for it was like an original show mm. they were the coolest guys yeah, yeah. Um, when we did uh, the thing with Veruca Salt I think it was at the Chameleon in Lancaster mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we didn't really get to hang with them <laughs> because at that show we were the opener for the opener, ah, so it was like it. Veruca Salt set up their stuff, and then we played with oh I forget the band they had um they had a hit song on the radio. Okay. Those guys were great. They oh, hung really? out with us, and then we towed had... the wet sprocket. No, no, no. <laughs> oh gosh, okay. I really wish. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, seeing those those right. bands and and the things that they do up there, you're like okay, it, it kind of puts you in your place a little bit. You're like yeah. Yeah, I thought we were good, but we're just a cover band, and those guys are yeah, and those bands that we opened up with. They were kind of at the bottom of that right, national right, right. whatever. I mean, they yeah. were. It was, it was. I thought they were great. Yeah. So, um, I know that music is very important to you, and family is also very important to you. Um, I noticed you combined both of those to work on a song with your daughter. I did. Um, are you still working on that? Is it coming out anytime soon? Yeah, I don't know. She's a little listening right now. She might be upstairs. Um, so, so yeah. So she, she has been writing songs here and there for a couple of years. Mm. 
Um, and she would, and I, you know, this is one of these things I feel bad. So she, she came to me about a year or two ago and said, I doubt I have the song, you know, can I record it? And I would just, I, when I was ready to record, hey, she was on. When she was like, let's do it, I, I just, you know, our schedules didn't kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. and then she went to, went to college. So finally last fall, um, she says, you know that song I wanted to record? I'm like, yes, let's do it. She says, no, I don't like that one anymore. I got a new one. I'm like, all right, you've got a new one? Play it for me. So she sat on the couch there and she played it for me. Mm -hmm. uh, this is like October. And mm -hmm. I said, let me record it. So we recorded it and we're, I mean, we started layering here and here. I mean, it's got a whole string section in it. Oh, wow. It's a pop rock song. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know how to mm -hmm. pinpoint it, but she, um, she loves it. I love it. We're still, we're finishing the demo portion of it right. now. Right. Um, we might be taking it over to another big studio, mm -hmm. which I'm sure we'll talk about that later. But yeah. um, taking it over there. Um, not sure where we want to go with it, what we want to do with it, but, you know, we're co-doing co this there. thing. Kind of we're co-doing this thing, which is like, it's kind of cool, father and, you know, daughter type of thing. <laughs> um, I have to say congratulations on your nomination for the Homie Awards, yes. which is WSTW's 93.7's awards they do every year. I think it was the 13th annual, I think, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, which was last night. Yes, it was. So I haven't heard, so what happened? So I... For producer, right? Did or not win anything. Engineer, yes. what was it? Engineer? So it was uh, for producer, uh, I guess producer of a year, yeah. um, and then it was also for keyboardist. Okay. Um, you know, I, I those two things, I didn't really think I'd get a, a really... A, award for keyboardist just because I didn't do a whole I mean I played some keyboard stuff right 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 one, so the, the, what it was is that my good friend Steve um, Steve Liberace I don't know if he's watching uh, hey Steve hey Steve uh, he Steve, probably is Steve came to me a little over a year ago and says hey I want to record some stuff with you down you know down in your studio mm -hmm. uh, would you be interested I said sure you know and he's like oh how much I'm like I don't know case of beer <laughs> <laughs> well that was easy it was easy so we worked on his songs for uh, we did three of them down here for mm -hmm. a good seven eight months um, I did some keyboard work with you know, and he we we'd come down on a Sunday and we'd do some work and he'd leave and I'd spend the next two or three weeks just doing stuff and right. tweaking it and trying this guitar part and trying that string part and blah, blah, blah. um and it, I I thought it came out really well. So the keyboard aspect of it, you know, as as far as a, an actual keyboard player, it was just layering piano things. Uh, or nothing right. that I would think you'd be right, super right. like, oh yeah, listen right. to my keyboard record. nomination. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but the producer end of it. Um, I am now just getting into, as a 48-year-old musician, mm. getting to where I want to be. And now mm. now that I'm here, now it's I'm climbing, climbing this ladder. Right, right, so right. producer, mm. engineering stuff, mm -hmm. songwriting at a different level. You know, So it was, um, didn't win that last night, but that's okay. I mean, there was, a, there was gosh. It's I mean, always nice to be nominated. Yeah, right? I mean, it was fun. Right. It was a good time last night. Um, is it true that you studied songwriting with Rob, Rob Hyman of the Hooters, right? Yeah. Um, for those of you out there on another part of the country that don't know, you should know who the Hooters are. They're awesome. But anyway, Rob Hyman wrote the song Time After Time with Cindy Lauper, and um, he's amazing. So what did, Bro what did Rob bring to your songwriting? Um, I'm not sure that he really brought anything other than... So actually, Steve, Steve Liberace and I, we took a, a songwriting course with him, with him in Philadelphia. This Again, it's early 2000s. Three years, two years. Mm -hmm. I didn't know when. Um, not necessarily him, but he kind of opened up the avenue where we were in this class with other songwriters, mm -hmm. and I got to hear all these different how this person writes that, how that right. person writes that, how these two collaborate. And he brought in uh, another songwriter and how she did this, and he told stories about when they were on this tour and how they wrote that, and it was just. All encompassing, and, w and when you get in that vein of things, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you know when you do your thing of where you're like with other interviewers, you just get so like amped up, Jam like, jammed up, like, and yeah. I, I yeah. can't wait to go yeah, home yeah, yeah. And, and, and write more. And like, yeah, yeah. Right. Even last night, like when I was at the the Homie Awards last night, yeah. I'm like, I want to come home and write a song. And right, right, right. So you know, as far as he, he I didn't necessarily learn how to write any songs with him, mm -hmm. but you kind of get in your head. Okay, well, this, these people write this way and they write that way, and mm -hmm. there's no one way to do things. Right, I think mean, that was right. really, the, I guess, maybe the message I got of it was there's no one way to write a song. Right, 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 right. right. 
There you go. Yeah. Um, you have an association with the Bon Jovi family. Um, yes, that Bon Jovi family. Um, you've worked with Bon Jovi's engineer, Obi O'Brien, and also you recently um, worked with John Bon Jovi's youngest son, Romeo, yes. on a project. Uh, can you tell me about your, your stuff with the Bon Jovi's? So, this is an interesting story. Good, so I like that. I, one of the things that I always preach, I preach to my kids, and I preach to anybody that I can say is, never piss people on the way up. Because you don't know when you're going to need those people right. somewhere. So in this whole Green Jeans things, we would make friends with, you know, many different people. And one right, of the right. guys that I made friends with was this friend of mine named Rich, Rich Scanella. Rich Scanella played with a band called uh, Strangers Angels. Oh, yeah. He was a drummer yeah, for Strangers yeah, yeah. Angels for many years. And we became friends, and he ended up actually, he was in Green Jeans for a little while. Not as a drummer, but he was an auxiliary percussionist for okay. like a year or two. Um, of course, at that time, we're like, auxiliary percussionist you're really sh I mean this is like beneath you but hey come join us <laughs> right, so Rich right. and I became pretty good friends and he would come over here and he would you know play drums And but at the same time he was working his way up doing other things mm. so he he was telling the story one time he played he got hired to, I'm, I'm getting to the Bon Jovi thing this, oh, this, is, like a, this is like a you're snake good. he played a um, he was hired to play in a studio somewhere in New Jersey I think and didn't know who the artist was mm -hmm. he ends up you know he's in the middle of playing I guess a track of this artist and this girl comes into the studio and she mm -hmm. starts doing all this weird stuff and <laughs> he's like who is this what girl? What is going on? Lady Gaga. Ah, <laughs> so okay. He's doing some stuff wow. he, he had no idea he was doing stuff with yeah, Lady yeah, Gaga. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know I think at the time she may not have been Lady Gaga but it was right. you know maybe she was. Yeah yeah yeah. So you know, he's moving his way, and then he ended up getting, I think, a gig as the house drummer for Bruce Springsteen and wow. Bon Jovi and all these other mm -hmm. big... And because of that gig, he Bon Jovi liked how he played, I guess, mm -hmm. and asked him to be his drummer for his side project. Okay. So Rich became okay. um, Bon Jovi's side... I think it was bon Jovi and the Little Kings, I think his okay. name was. Man. He became his side project for that. Okay. Fast forward to early 2013. I'm trying to make this story so slow. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Early 2013, um, uh, Tico Torres, who is Bon Jovi's real drummer, mm -hmm. they're out on tour, worldwide tour somewhere, has some sort of medical condition. Mm -hmm. They've got to immediately stop the tour. Bon Jovi calls up Rich. We need you to play drums oh, wow. on for me right now. Okay. Can you be... Your first show is next week, Rio de Janeiro, in front of 70,000 people or something. You know, Holy something ridiculous like that. Crap. So he learns all these songs. <laughs> goes out on tour for two or three weeks, four weeks, I don't know what it was. Right, right. In that tour, Rich is, my buddy Rich, is talking to Obi O'Brien. Okay. Um, and Obi is looking for a keyboard guy who does drum loops, blah, 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 mm. blah. And, you know, and Rich is like, well, my buddy Harry, um, he lives out in this little town in Chester County, <laughs> you know, Oxford, Pennsylvania. You probably never heard of it. And Obi's like, uh, Oxford? Are you talking about like Oxford, Chester County, Oxford? Where I live? <laughs> so... The All right, guy. that's meant to be. Uh, so right. Obi, I mean, I won't say exactly where he lives, but right, he lives right. like ten minutes that right, way. Right. <laughs> um, so of course, the, so when I had to go meet with him, I, I mean, you're nervous as all can be, you know. Yeah. Here I am meeting with this big producer who's worked with, Everybody. I think Alice right. Cooper, Bon Jovi, so many Bon Jovi albums, and blah blah blah. blah. That's amazing. And you know that was two thousand fall of two thousand thirteen, and since then I've been working with him probably almost every week. I mean, yeah. we talk on the phone all yeah. the time, and I do side projects with him. I did get to do a Bon Jovi documentary about yeah, Camden. Camden, right? Camden. I yeah, did a yeah, lot yeah, of keyboard yeah. work for that mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago. And then he called me last fall and said, Bon Jovi's son, Romeo, is, you know, doing, uh, he wants to do his own stuff. You know, mm -hmm. we're coming over on such and such a date. I'm like, like, what's happening? Like his son's <laughs> coming over to my house. Like, really? <laughs> right. like, really? Okay. Uh, and it was, I, I only, he was only here once, uh, but we yeah. did, I did some drum loops for him, you know, for some demo mm -hmm. stuff that he was doing, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, Kind of, it's kind of there, yeah. um, but you know, like when you get to this level, you just hope that you're doing well. And but he's been calling me for five years now, so I think hey, I'm doing, right, doing right. something right. Yeah. Right? I love that. That's mm -hmm. amazing. You never know. That was a long story, who, but I you know it's all in who you know and me. And so and that again, bring it back to you don't piss people off. So you know, I get I now get to work with Obi, and I've worked mm -hmm. with Rich, and you know, you, you're you get to do things right. that you would not normally do. Because I hear so many stories of musicians, oh, well, that guy's Get an a-hole. Because he's got an a-hole with this owner, he's got an a-hole with that guy. And right. Just, there's there's no room for it, really. Yeah, don't burn your bridges. Right. right. Um, 
Now, I know that you worked long and hard to get your master's degree in teaching, mm -hmm. and you're still teaching yeah. and everything. Um, what's it like when you, you see a student learn from the things you, you taught them, and you know, and what teachers have you had in your life? Um, really... So, there, uh, you know, you don't really know that a kid's are really getting it until they leave and they come back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I know this. There's this one. I don't even know. You maybe watch JP. JP McGrath. I don't know if you're watching. I just you know <laughs> within the last year JP. or two, he's. I don't know if he's still in high school. He might be out now. Uh -huh. um, but he's playing guitar and he's doing all these things. And I remember, you know, I know he was really into music. Um, he was. He had a little rough time in, mm -hmm. in elementary school, but it, you know, he's seeing that he's he he liked music, and I hear him. He said he really enjoyed you know his time in Hillsdale. Mm -hmm. um, I know there was one student at one point that said that you know I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing in high school if it wasn't for you. And you hear those things, mm -hmm. and it really is true when a teacher says all you need to do is touch one kid and it's all worth it. Like seriously, it really is. You know, yeah. um, so who might you know? I've had a couple of teachers over the year. I <laughs> I'm just gonna sound weird. Because, but because I've had interacted with her on Facebook, but Mrs. Berlin, my first grade uh, teacher, hi, I'm Mrs. Berlin, hey, everyone. Hey. Uh, you know, I can still remember being in that classroom in first grade, and you know, and, and being put my little book bag in the cubby, and <laughs> and you you've got little memories. I always used to think about okay, I've got memories from every grade, right? But I had these vivid memories from first grade, and I because she made it so enjoyable for me. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, Miss Berlin. And I think everybody has that teacher that kind of like. Sparks something. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, do have to say thank you to my music teachers, like Mr. Lights. Well, Gary Lights will definitely. Of course. Nancy's Gary's on. on here, I think. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah Gary he was on here earlier. And Gary's still coming out to our stuff. Oh, like, I know. Just I saw know. him last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, definitely those, those, it, you know, you hear some horror stories about music, music teachers. I think one of the things I love about Gary is that when Brian and I were in high school, he just let Brian and I do our thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and some music teachers might you know squash that. Right. Brian and just did our thing, go with the flow and we because... just we became this Brian See, and Harry, the Brian and Harry show. See what happened? Um, which was which was great. <laughs> right, um, right. Thanks, Gary and Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. And Nancy, yeah, um, yeah. Thanks. Um, I've always heard that like being in a band is a great training ground for musicians and stuff. Um, do you think that's true? And and what did being in a band do for you? Do for you? So yeah, being in a band it. It can do a lot of good things, and it also depends on sort of what band. Bands are like families, mm -hmm. and we, I mean, I can tell you a number of fights that Green Jeans yeah, had, yeah. you know. Uh, and people would say, why did Green Jeans become the big band that they did? You know, why, how come they can do this cover song, mm -hmm. and that band can do this cover song, but people gravitate over here. Right. And it's the chemistry. Mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, you can't, you can't. It teach chemistry. You can't teach chemistry. It is what it is on stage, and, and we have had this chemistry on stage, mm -hmm. and the fans see it, right. and they gravitate towards that. Um, so that was one thing about that. But mm -hmm. be, being a band, it does teach you how to be a performer. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do miss performing. Yeah. I hate the travel. The travel is just that's, that's a lot. Of everyone travel. will say that's the worst thing. Travel yeah, yeah, sucks. yeah. Um, being it, away from the family, that kind of thing. You know? it, I mean, but if I can actually put one thing at the top of my list, being in a band and dealing with people mm -hmm. I was a real I won't say quiet kid but I was I was you know a shy kid mm -hmm. and I mean because of the band I mean you put me in a room with a hundred people five thousand people and yeah. I'll, just go, I'll go talk Came to everybody out of your show I'll and... talk to everybody I don't care you know and that was the band because yeah, yeah, I yeah, was yeah. forced to mm -hmm. you know after every set how are these people want to talk to you I'm like what <laughs> people want to talk to me <laughs> okay <laughs> and you and you kind of learn how to talk to people right 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 you learn to Okay, this conversation's going nowhere. I gotta go to the bathroom. I, right, hey, right, right. hey, it was good talking to you. I'll be back. You, know, right. you just learn how to talk to people. Right, right, right. So, um, you recently started doing more producing and studio engineering yeah. here at your. This is Harry's home studio, by the way. Hmm. In his house. Studio. It's awesome. Little man studio. Um, little man studios, kids. <laughs> um, so, who are some of the newer artists that you're currently kind of working with? So I did work, like I said, I did work with with Steve Liberace, Steve Liberace right. Steve. And yes, the Liberace, he is related to the Liberace piano guy. Yeah, I just thought it was like a stage name. Oh, that's his name. Get out of here! <laughs> like <laughs> serious? Oh, uh, Steve. Yeah, he's Steve. here. He said he was coming to. Yeah, yeah. you gotta have to tell us a story about how you and Liberace are actually related. That's awesome. Um, that's kind of cool. So I was, I did some stuff for Steve. I did a mm -hmm. song for his before. Um, you know, a couple other little things with other people that I would do in here. Um. It, it just it's this is sort of actually what I started college for. 
I, my first year of college, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> 1988, um, I actually went to Ohio State to, to do audio engineering. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they, that program kind of got defunct and I came back and did, got my teaching degree. Mm -hmm. um, but I was always fascinated with the, the technical aspect of, mm -hmm. of the whole music thing. Right. Um, and how a song is put together. I mean, I had these little four tracks. I'm like, I mm. four tracks. Old school. Old and I used school. to take these four tracks. Actually, before I had a four track, you know, I had to have two tape recorders. <laughs> and you'd say something in the one tape recorder, and then you record it on the other one. And then you take that, and then you record it back to and that's like the primitive, like, four tracks. Right. And I was always fascinated by, like, that, drum machines and keyboards and how this worked. Um, so, so that's always been there. The songwriting came with that, and we did some, I did some songwriting with Brian. Even... So so Green Jeans, I got done Green Jeans, and I kind of got back into, I want to do, learn more. Mm -hmm. um, and even within the last year, now that I'm really, I'm honing in now. I'm, I just, I don't read books. <laughs> I really don't read books. But like within the last three months, I bought like five books. Like, here's three of them right here that I'm reading, all about, you know, uh, the there bus compression and EQ and re reverb. <laughs> so, I mean, stuff that I knew, but I didn't really know the ins and outs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I mean, Obi, the other day, he was standing right here. You never stop learning. Yeah, you can't. So, I mean, I have to, like, even my, my daughter stuff that were, was this hers? No, I think I, her stuff, this is her stuff <laughs> that I was working on. Um, to me, it sounds good, mm -hmm. but I know outside of my little studio, it's going to be average. Like Obi. I don't, yeah. Right. yeah. So, I, I, I'm learning from Obi. I said, I said to him I said the other night, like, oh, how do you do this and this, this? Mm -hmm. He said, come on over. I'll show you how to do some mixing wow. stuff. And I was like, yes. And you, he, know, you always have to learn. And he probably yeah. has an amazing studio, it's right? Ridiculous. It really <laughs> Yeah. It's great. Jealous. Oh. So, so what, what he was saying was, so who, the, new, the new people. So, yeah, I'm yeah, working yeah. with, um, through Obi, we're working with one guy named Cole Redding. Mm -hmm. Who's a great kid out of Philadelphia? Um, he's not kidding anymore. He's you know, right. mid 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 to late twenties. Um, okay. He is. He was on American Idol. Uh, gosh, er, two thousand seven ish, mm -hmm. eight ish. Um, you know his name that he, uh, if you're not watching, I hope you're not watching. His his real name was Kenny Hoffpower, which he hates. So he's kind of got a new Cole name. Redding. Cole sounds Redding better. sounds much better. Sounds um, stage ready. Cole has got a <laughs> phenomenal voice, um, and his songwriting is phenomenal. Mm. He, he he will make it. Um, we're just we're finding his path right now, so we're working with him. Right. Uh, Phoenix Jacob is another kid out of I think he's either New York or North Jersey, mm -hmm. high schoolish. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how old whole Phoenix is, uh, but he, I mean, within the last couple months, I mean, his his face is plastered on billboards in Times Square. Nice. He was in a Mountain Dew commercial doing something. He's right. been down here a few times and over there. What type of music is his? It's more like a rock? pop pop songwriter ish. You okay. know, okay. laid back a little bit. Um, his stuff, he just released his first song the other day. Mm -hmm. um, there's a girl out in uh, one of the, maybe uh, Iowa, uh, mm -hmm. who just moved this way. She opened up for Bon Jovi out in Sioux City, Iowa, I think, okay. um, who now Ob Obi is working with. We're doing some stuff with her. A lot okay. of younger, younger people. Right, right, right. right. Um, which is kind of what he's into, which I kind of like too, because mm -hmm. they, they're finding their way. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And yeah. as they're finding their way, I'm finding my way with them. Right, which right. Which is kind of cool. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Now another producer you worked with is David Ivory, right? And, and he's worked with like the Roots, Erica Badu, Patti LaBelle. Yeah. I mean, come on, right? Yeah. Right. Um, what was that experience like working with him? It didn't work a whole lot with him. I worked with him um, uh, when right when Green Jeans was. We were trying to do some originals. Mm -hmm. um, he started working with us on some things, and we went to his studio. Um, and it it's really interesting how different guys and different vibes work mm -hmm. so um so you work with obi and you get one sort of vibe and obi is is kind of like um uh, i don't know rock oriented mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, old school rock uh david was more into the more rock hip-hop and he had this kind of hey cool guy jazz thing going right, 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 um right. and not that i mean not that his he um was a bad producer. I mean, he's great, yeah, great, yeah, great yeah, producer. Yeah. He had a great home studio. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't gel with him, you know, but oh, it, was, okay. it was just one of the, you don't gel with everybody. Yeah, 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 nothing yeah. wrong. It was just, you know, right. uh, but he was, um, I remember when we were, we had a rehearsal at the old Brownies Plymouth, mm -hmm. which was somewhere up in Brownies Plymouth, Plymouth meeting. Right. Um, it's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we had an early rehearsal, maybe three or four o'clock in the afternoon and David came in and was watching us and, mm -hmm. and, I did remember hearing him, which was kind of cool. We were playing our original song. He said, no, we're going to stop that part. Try this or try that. 
And you know, when he would say that, I remember thinking, I never thought of it that way. I never mm-hmm. thought of the song doing that. And that was one of the cool things, like, oh, okay. Right. Another one of these, seeing things from different people's point of views. Mm-hmm. I was very narrow-minded as an early songwriter. I'm like, it was my way. I want it this way. <laughs> you know? So that was a kind of cool thing I did learn from him. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, um, now, I happen to think that the Delco and Philly music scene is pretty vibrant oh, yeah. and everything. Um, as someone who's been in and around it and everything, what are you thinking about it right now, like the scene? You know, it's it's hard. I kind of got... I would say I'm less in it now than I sort of was. Mm-hmm. I, I really knew a whole lot of the cover scene. And being in the cover scene, you kind of hear different original artists. Right. I really wish I was more apt to the original scene. I know from last night, there's um, a couple people you know I heard sing down there, which I've heard before. Um, John Fay. He, mm-hmm. He's a he's a Delaware guy, but plays all over the Philly area. Um, there's um, uh, Christ, I think Christina Havrilla. She's mm-hmm. uh, she's a big Delaware slash right. Philly player. You know, and I, I wish I could speak more to what that scene is. Um, now that I'm doing working more with Obi, mm-hmm. I'm more in tune to what's I wouldn't say what's happened nationally, right, but right, right. you know, different artists that are trying to do that route. Um, I wish I knew more. <laughs> Maybe that's the next thing I need to learn. Um, so what upcoming shows do you have going on? <sighs> What's going on? So this is the time of the year. I love it and I hate it. Right, right. So, you know, for for, for cover band and, and, and solo cover artists, their season is like May through September. Right, right. Me, right. mine's sort of like late March through early June. Okay. Uh, and I've got a lot of shows with we have a band called Just a Tip. We, like mm-hmm. me, Brian, and a couple of Rob Groden mm-hmm. and uh, Jay and, and Kevin. We we've got this band. That we play five to ten times a year. We've mm-hmm. got um, I have a duo that I play with Brian. We um, sometimes I play with Rob as a trio. But our latest stuff. So this weekend, um, Sunday. Uh, let's just say <laughs> Sunday, Brian is playing at the Starboard. Okay. Okay. And. Um, Brian is having a few friends play with him. Okay. So it's called Brian and Friends. Ah. Let's just say that. Like We're playing that's at the cool, Star Wars. Cool. Um, and then, so next week, Brian and I are playing a, uh, we have a duo at the Saint, uh, the James Street Tavern in Newport, Delaware, Friday night. Write it down, people. It's next Friday night, <laughs> a week from the night. Uh, and that's always a good time. It's like 8 o'clock, 8 to 11. Brian and I, we right. jam out. Uh, and then Saturday, uh, can see I, all the, the wheels are turning. Oh my God. Well, how about they can go to harrygiovon.com, Harry com, yes, right? Yes. And you can get all the information. Hey, I do know that we, have, we have, do have a big show coming up in, okay. in early April, which is always a cool one. We always go down to um, Greenville, North Carolina. Oh, yes, 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 uh, yes. And they always have a big, this little hot dog beer place. They have a huge festival mm-hmm. thing right there. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so we, I mean, it's... it's um, Eastern North Carolina University, I think ECU, Eastern Carolina University. Mm-hmm. We play at their on the campus, um, and it's like two thousand people show up for this thing. We always kind of open it up and get everybody going. Right. Last year it was um, well, one year we did Polly Polly, uh, the guy from uh, Jersey. from Jersey Shore. Yeah, one Pauly, year, right? Right. Uh, last year was um, um, oh gosh, little little John. Lil John. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably know Lil John. That. He has his, scre- his, his yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> scream. Lil John. Does. Yeah, they know who Lil John. We did, we did with him. This year we're playing with DJ Esco, which I don't know who he is, but the kids know who he is. Oh, he's like, oh, he's huge. Tech, like, he's, yeah, EDM and we're also doing whatever, um, right? DJ Mads, okay. and she's she's another one that all the kids. I asked my son. He's like, what? You're Listen playing DJ Mads? All the kids. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't like kidding anymore. I'm like, in my late forties. I love it. And my son's like, what? You're playing with Esco? You're playing with DJ Mads? Oh my God, Zach, can I go? Okay. Okay. He's really excited about it. I gotta learn about Google. Google. Okay, right. Um, so Google. We, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so Brian actually we have a couple benefits coming up in right. the late. We're playing with Lisa Willem. We're Lisa. Yeah, we yeah, have yeah, a yeah. Relay for Life thing we're coming up. Oh, good. It's just, it's yeah. just, I mean, stuff kind of happened from now until mid-June. And then I, I kind of take a break. Right. And I had a few shows and... Get and, back in the studio. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. All right. It is game time, people. Oof. Are you ready? Got my game face on. I do. I just started doing this game called huh. Which One. All you right. have to pick which one gotcha. that you would prefer. I'm ready. Out of the list. Bring it on. Here we go. Camping or home? Camping. <laughs> <laughs> Beer or whiskey? Beer. Writing music or playing music? 
Oh, look. You know what? I stumped him. I'm going to have... Oh, God. I'm going to have to go with writing music. All right. Okay. Um, oh, here you go. Journey or Sticks? Journey? <laughs> Excuse me for cursing. Hell yes. <laughs> live show or live theater show? Like live playing mm. or concert? I gotta be, it depends on the mood. Uh, if I had to pick one, I would have to pick live, live, live show, like live music, instead of live theater. Oh, the live right. theater is a second. It's close. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, I, um, if Darcy, if you're listening, I'm going to bring you a little bauble from my, my uh, sponsor. I'm going to drop it off. Oh, yeah. It's a little bauble. My sponsor is www.kingoflingvip.com. Don't go there. Don't, don't, don't forget it, people. Yeah. Harry. Thank you. That's Darren. Thank you. Thank you. It's Darren. Thank you. Look Darren up. He's got good stuff happening. Oh, there's some stuff coming up, people. Yeah. I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. As always. And I haven't seen Harry for like forever. And yeah. here we are. Yeah. Right? Well, thank you. Make sure you go to Harry's site, harrygiovon.com. Check him out. See what's going on his schedule. See what's going on. I really appreciate you guys being here for Pop the Question. Have a great night, guys. Thank you. Darren. Thanks, Harry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Absolutely.